Hey guys, so today we're going to continue chapter 6. This is section 3 in your textbook, and this is the slope-intercept form. That's the name of the section, slope-intercept form. So what is slope-intercept form? Well, we're going to be talking about the equation of a linear function, right? And we've been, we already talked about the standard form of that, which was the ax plus by equals c. Now there's another form of linear function called the slope-intercept form. And the reason the slope-intercept form is so important because it tells us two things. It tells us the slope, which is super important because we had a whole section on that, and also tells us about the intercept, which I know that we solve for the intercept by letting x equal 0 or y equal 0. So it's going to tell us one of the intercepts without us having to solve for the intercept. So again, super useful to you guys. All right, so this is the slope-intercept form of a linear equation. It's y equals mx plus b. So y is going to be by itself on the left-hand side, okay? And then the variable x, there's just going to be one very one term with x in it, okay? And x can have a coefficient or a number in front of it called m. And there's a plus b, a constant, by itself with no variable. So that b will be a number of some kind, okay? So again, that m in front of the x is the slope of the line. So if you have... Um, uh, nothing in front of x, like let's just say it says x, then remember you still have a 1 in front of x, so your slope in that case would be 1. Let's say you didn't have just y equals some number. Well then think about it like this, that means that there's a 0 in front of x, which means that m was 0, right? Because 0 times x is 0. So again, the, there's always going to be some sort of slope for your linear equation. All right, now the B is the Y coordinate of the Y intercept. Remember, we find the Y intercept by letting X be zero, which is why in our ordered pair, that first number that appears, which is our X, is zero. And then the next number is going to be the B that shows up in our slope intercept form. So you can get this number, this ordered pair, zero comma B, from Find solving for the slope intercept form and finding out what b is. You could also just take your equation, whatever it is, and let x be 0 and then find your b, which is what we've done previously. You'll have to do that. You'll actually have to find the y intercept and the x intercept. But now the y intercept is found for you in the slope intercept form of the, of the linear equation. So, how do we how do we do this? Well, we start with the linear function 3x plus 2y equals 6. So this is in standard form. And we want to put it into slope-intercept form. We have to solve for y, right? So the first thing we do is we're going to subtract 3x from both sides, okay? And then to get rid of that 2, we divide everything by 2, right? So 2y divided by 2 is y. 6 divided by 3 is, sorry, 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3x divided by 2, well, that would be 1.5, but we like the idea of fractions. Remember, we don't want to deal with decimals anymore. So we're just going to say, leave it as 3 divided by 2 or 3 over 2x, okay? Remember, the minus stays down as well. So now, one more thing. Um, the form of the linear, the the linear equation for the slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b, where the constant appears last. So we're going to use the commutative property to exchange these, right? This term, the negative 3 half x, needs to appear first, and then the 3 needs to appear second. So we're going to rearrange the terms using the commutative property. All right, so now that we solve for y, what does this tell us? Well, tells us that the slope is negative 3 halves. And if a slope is negative, remember that means it's going downhill. That's also useful information. And then our b value is 3, which means that our y-intercept is 0 because we let x be 0, comma, 3, comma, 3. So we have our slope and our y-intercept. All right, so let's review the forms of linear equations. We learned the standard form, which was ax plus by equals c. Okay, then we have the slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. 
And then we also have something called the function form. So remember when we studied functions, functions, instead of saying y, we say f of x. So there we have f of x. And then we just put in the mx plus b after that. And so I was telling you what the general forms of linear equations are. And in an example, we started with 3x plus 2y equals 6 for standard form. When we changed it to slope-intercept form, which was y equals mx plus b, it changed to, it changed to y equals negative 3 halves x plus 3. And then we changed it to function form, which is f of x equals mx plus b. We ended up with f of x equals negative 3 halves x plus 3. So let's write down the steps on how to change a linear equation to a slope-intercept form. Step 1, solve the linear equation for y. Step 2, arrange the terms on the right-hand side so that the variable term, the term that has the x in it, appears first. Okay, so why, what else can we use the slope-intercept form? We know it gives us the slope, and it know, we know we get the y-intercept. Well, those two things are super helpful when we want to graph a line. Now, previously, when we were graphing lines, we had to plot a whole bunch of points, plot the points, and then connect the dots and draw a line through it, and then we got our graph. Well, no more. Now, all we have to do is these simple things. The first thing we want to do is plot the y-intercept. Remember, that's going to be your 0, comma b value. So since it's a y-intercept, it's going to be somewhere on the y-axis because x is 0, and that's okay. So from your y-intercept, from that particular point, we use the slope to plot one or more other points. The slope, remember, is the rise over the run. So our numerator is going to tell us how far to, to rise from that y-intercept point, and then the denominator is going to tell us how far to run from, from that y-intercept. Okay, so that's how we use the slope-intercept form to graph a line. Let's see the action, okay? We want to graph y equals 1 half x plus 4. So the first thing we want to do is plot that y-intercept, which is 0 comma b, so in this case is 0 comma 4. So we're going to, to graph 0, 4, remember there's no, x is 0, so we're not going to go left or right, but then we're going to go up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and that's where our new point is, okay? Then we're going to use our slope, the 1 half, to get other points. Now remember, slope is rise over run, so the numerator means rise, which means from this y-intercept, we are going to rise 1. And then, since the and then since the denominator is 2, that means we're going to run 2. So we're going to move to the right 2, okay? So up 1, right 2, and we got that from the slope. Awesome. So now we have another point on the graph. Yay! Okay. So now let's add another point. In order to add the other point, we're going to go in the opposite direction. So because we went up 2, up 1 and right 2, now we do the same thing but opposite. So down 1 and to the left 2. And that gives us our third point. Now we draw a line through the points. There's our line. Perfect. All right, next example. We want to write 2x plus 3y equals negative 3 as a linear function. So what, step 1, solve for y. We subtract 2x from both sides, then we divide everything by 3. So again, instead of saying negative 2 divided by 3 is some decimal, we don't want to do that. We want to have our rise over our run, so we want to leave it as a fraction, negative 2 thirds. And then we do 3 divided by 3 and get 1 for our b value. So now we have it in slope-intercept form. And now our last step, remember to make it a function, we let y stand for f of x to indicate that we're going to plug an x value in to get our y. All right, next example. Write y equals 3 in slope-intercept form. So we already solved for y, but the question is, where is our m? Well, remember what I told you, if there's not an x value, that means it's being multiplied by 0. 
So y equals 0x plus 3 is our slope-intercept form, which means that the slope is 0 and the y-intercept is 3. On the graph, what does that look like? Well, remember to graph it, we first plot the y-intercept, which is 0, 3, which we do. But since the rise in the run is 0, that means it's not rising and it's not running. It's just there. So we've got a horizontal line at 3. All right, so if we were to write that in function form, it would be f of x equals 3. So whatever x value we plug in, x equals 1, x equals 2, x equals 3, x equals 4, we're always going to get 3, right, which means that we get the horizontal line. All right, when we have something like that, anytime we have a horizontal line and we have y equals a constant or f of x equals a constant number, it's called a constant function, constant function. So that's just a new, um, new vocab word for us to learn, a new type of function, constant function. All right, next example. We're gonna let n be the number of pages and we have a function, right? And this function is representing a 23 page, or it's representing an album, right? So we want to calculate the cost of the album, and it's calculated the cost for the number of pages in is equal to 1.25 times the number of pages plus 25. So that big C is cost for number of pages equals 1.25n plus 25. So if we have 23 pages, that would be C of n, right? Cost of 23 pages equals 1.25 times 23 plus 25. We use our calculator to figure to, and we punch in 1.25 times 23. We add 25 to it, and our calculator tells us it's 53.75 which is the answer, that's the cost for a 23 page album. So let's say that this cost is too much. Well, that means that if we need to figure out, let's say we wanna figure out um, how many pages we want for just $50. All we have to do is use the same function and we're gonna, instead of letting n be 23 pages, we're gonna let n be a smaller number until we get something that's under $50. Right, so your turn. You're going to do 623 to, sorry, sorry, section 6.3, number 2 through 6 evens. They're due in class. Um, thank you for watching.